Hey, this is Trey Payne, uh, risk manager, insurance broker, and business consultant. Born and raised here in Middle Georgia, and I do my business from here uh, all the way across the country. Huge man of God and a family man. Uh, one of the biggest quotes that resonate with me and, and that carry me day to day is, you get out what you put in. Um, the work must be done in order to get out any result. Hi, my name is Lawrence Rouse, known as LRW3, and we are back with yet another episode of The Keys. Today, I have a very familiar face to the Talk To Me Nice platform. I know it's been a while since you've seen us, so for the new audience or people who may have forgot, go ahead and introduce yourself to them yet again. Man, all right, so I'm Trey Payne. Um, of course, some of you guys may know me as DJ SB, uh, but I mean, I'm here today in my uh, risk management and business consultant advisory type standpoint. We're gonna talk major business with my boy. Absolutely, absolutely. Like I said, for those of y'all who know him, of course, y'all know him from the rap sheet. Like I said, you know him as DJ SB. Might be hard for some of the audience. They, they probably you want him to say, nah, we want to hear the music. This ain't about the music. He here to put his business hat on. Probably one of the most established and, I mean, one of the most youngest entrepreneurs I really know out here killing it, man. I'm not just saying it to hype him because he's sitting right here. You really been killing it overall, man. So. For the people who don't know exactly what you do on the professional side of things, let's just start by letting them know um, just one or two of the many hats you wear. Cause you go all day listening to what you actually do. I right, no doubt. I mean, like you said, man, I try to keep my hands in a lot um, because I'm at the age of where the more risk you take, the longer it's going to pay off in the long run. Uh, but my main deal, I've been in insurance since uh, I graduated college. Uh, I started out at State Farm as just, you know, the normal insurance salesperson. I've been an office manager in an insurance agency. Uh, I've even owned my own insurance agency and sold an agency. Um, and now uh, I do risk management on the personal side for a commercial insurance brokerage, uh, which is the second largest commercial broker in the country. Uh, and then the other thing I do, which is my baby, and hopefully I can just completely transition to it uh, at some point in life, I'm a small business consultant. Um, during the time of me opening my insurance agency and learning the insurance game, I learned a lot about business automation. And I learned about making a transition from a worker inside your business to an actual business owner and like a, a true CEO and a boss. And my mentors you know, played a huge role in that. And I've learned how to help young entrepreneurs take their business they work in every day and automate it mm -hmm. and do things the correct way. Not even just from the standpoint of like your EIN or you know stuff like that, but it's like truly having a payroll that's set up, getting all like any utilities your business have, you know, make sure that's set up the right way and it's paid. Getting your DOL number if you got employees and that you're paying employee taxes on W two. Truly teach people how to you know secure funding, not from a standpoint of oh pay me X amount of dollars and I'll get you funding, but like hey these are the avenues you should go explore, and also just teaching people how to get out of hustle mode and go into pure business owner mindset, like. Stop hustling your business and working for your business and working in your business because if you go away, there's no business. You know what I'm saying? So I've truly learned how to help people uh, make that transition and automate it, and I absolutely love it. That's 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 some real keys what you said right there. I'm not even going front. You kind of called me out like if you go away, the business go away because I was gone two weeks. Studio will close two weeks. Hit, like, hit the fans, that, over it. That, that's something that really like speaks to like I mean most people who open in a business because that's I've heard the phrase before too. If you are, if you quote unquote own a business and you work in a business, you don't. You're, you're an employee. Yeah, you're an employee you're to an yourself. Employee, you're yeah. not really a boss. You're, you're just an employee. employee. And not wrong. So, what is just because it's you, everybody's going to be an employee at some point. Yeah, you got to start there. Like right? yeah. nobody's going to walk in, open the key, get the keys to the building, open it up, and you ain't working for yourself. Yep. You know, but so not to obviously, I don't want you to give too in-depth of your business model because then what would be the point of them hiring you, of course. But, you ain't me. But, <laughs> you still can't, yeah. I didn't give you the blueprint. I mean, you go, I, I can tell you A, B, and you still might end up on D instead of C. That's I'm a, telling you. That's a fact. But what's something you notice as far as small businesses? Like what you said, I'm going to be honest, I fall victim to a lot of that stuff too. Even like, because um, as you know, I started this not to become a business. It was just to be a podcast and be a YouTuber. So I'm going to be honest, and I know a lot of people will start like that. You started as a hustle, and then at some point you do have to transition into an actual business, and a lot of the people, me included, we fall short when it's time to make that transition, or you make that transition a little later than you should because you don't actually know what to do. So I'm me again, I put it off. I ain't know what to do, so you know I'm busy today. That's a next week problem, even though it was actually a two-week-ago problem. 
So, in your opinion, when is the right time for somebody to get an EIN number? Um, in my personal opinion, um, it would be when the, either the revenue that you bring in is large enough to where you're like, hey, I gotta separate my taxes for like you know for tax but I gotta separate this, or when the revenue and the exposure is large enough because the EIN that LLC gives you a certain set of protections like a veil or even like an S corp like you know having a corporation like the, that way you hear people tell you all the time I don't want to pierce my corporate veil by doing certain things. So when you get to that format or you know that platform, okay, yeah, you you need it. Now again, if you still in just hustle mode, you making money and everything kind of intertwined, you ain't really disciplined yet. Hey, sit down with your regular little CPA, your regular tax advisor. This is what my business do. This is what I do personally and just iron it out. Um, but that's just my personal opinion on it. And then again, for some people, it's just like, depending on the business, you go ahead and jump right into the EIN because you're trying to secure certain things. Like some people won't allow, won't do business with you unless you have an EIN or unless, you know, you, um, you want to get certain funding and it's through the EIN versus your personal deal. And there's different ways to look at it. Let me ask you this, because I see a lot of issues with small businesses who first get started and they want to go get funding, which is great. Obviously, you need, money rules the world. You need to get some money to get your business off the ground. What would you recommend to a business who wants funding, but, you know, unless you're getting grants, which are harder to get. But if you're going out there to get a loan, do you recommend opening the door, getting a loan? I, man, I'll be honest with you. So, and I work with my clients range from... Fresh out of school, just don't want to go work W-2 jobs to people that have been in business for 10, 15 years. When it comes to funding, it's a tricky game. One, stay off social media. If somebody's <laughs> like, man. You might need to repeat that, boy. Yeah, everybody for real. Got like, stay off social media. And if somebody's coming to you and telling you how to get money or how to get rich, they not actually get money or get rich. I've never seen anybody wealthy come and give you the, just like, hey, this is how you do it. Don't work like that. There's so many different levels to funding as well. I think the first thing before you ever address going to get funding is truly understanding what you're trying to get this funding for. If it's just to jumpstart your business, boy, go grind. Girl, go grind. Like, you taking on debt that may not even be needed. And if you don't have a true plan or you don't understand how this funding has to be paid back, you're going to fuck yourself in the end. Like you don't truly like I've seen loans where give you money today, start taking payment repayments back tomorrow. I've seen things where they'll give you the money today and you got, you know, a year to pay it, but you putting 30 points on it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So mm. it's yeah, you know what I'm saying? So just because they want to give you free money or give you money up front, don't mean it's always the best thing to go take it and go get it. Now that's a fact, especially by knowing what you're gonna do with the money, because I've seen a lot of people go get the funding, which is great. You got the money. But then you come to their business or money when you spent on a business nine times out of ten. Let's just, let's just put it where it need to be. Having a plan to execute is two totally yeah. different things. But like you said, you need to know what you're buying. But like, what what are you gonna buy when you get this money? Because if you just say, "Oh, I need to go get fifty thousand for this business," well, what do you need fifty four? I don't know, but you know, I gotta get a bunch of stuff. But then you don't get nothing. But if you're like, "Yo, I really need." Like like me, I'm in a videography, photography business. Things get expensive and they get expensive quick. Yep. So you're like, yo, to be to be competitive, I need to go buy this new camera. This is a six thousand dollar camera. You're gonna throw a lens on there that's about three grand. That's about nine, ten thousand dollars gone right there. Yep. So if I go get this funding, all right, you know where it's going. But at the same time, I just got the funding. And then even like and to shoot yourself an example, I've seen you piece it together. Yeah, that's which a is a part of the grind. That go like, to grind it though. Like one thing I'm proud to say. Um, and everybody, like I said, this is the keys. We're not here to judge. We're here to give yeah. you, you know, everybody's experiences. One thing that I've been able and, and, and grateful and, and it's been a blessing for me to do, I've never taken a loan on anything I bought. Everything I bought has been from profit. So, like, I have not had to go into the red to buy anything. Um, but that's not everybody's experience. Everybody's business, like, like you said, I already kind of had a, a following. I already kind of had a platform that, that helped my business grow, you know, leverage it into something else. Everybody don't get to start like that. So but that's you just being also, honest. you also had patience. You also had a plan. And then you can, you can take this out, but you also had something in the background that didn't force you to like, I gotta, I gotta make this work. Like this mm -hmm. has to be my, this yeah, has to be my breadwinner. You know what I'm saying? Like, and whether that's you keeping a part-time job or you having a full-time job or you just having a, a nest egg of money, there's something in the background that allowed you to chase a dream and something that you wanted to do. Just like this is my business consulting deal. I tell you, I keep, my, you think I'm just gonna up and quit insurance? I would never. But it's like, I always will keep something that's 
security without being security. There's never in this job market, in this economy, job security, forget about it. Yeah, we it, headed towards a recession if we're not already there. Man, and if you ain't in a service like based industry of like where you provide some type of service, man, they automate you or or just downsize and get ready of the day. Ooh, that is that is a that is a great thing I wanna ask and I don't wanna make this general or specific to you. But yeah, I know you deal with a lot of businesses. We just acknowledge we're headed towards a recession. Money's just not there for just doing things as it was. Maybe a few PPP hit, everybody and their mama had money and money to blow. No matter what industry you were in, you were gonna make some money. Yep. Now, like 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 we just acknowledged, we're in a recession or we're headed towards a recession. Money's tighter. Um, insurance, obviously, you'll be probably well off on that because regardless, that's still something you have to have anyways. Um, but let me ask you this. Back during COVID when, um, I don't know if it applied to you, so I might be assuming, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I know a lot of insurance companies, you were not allowed to cancel anybody, even if they did not pay. Was that the case on your end of things? So, there were a lot of companies that just became a lot more lenient with the billing cycle. They allowed you to, you know, at least on my end, from what I say, allowed you to have more just skip payments. And some people, because some people still canceled your insurance, but there was a point in time where, like, I think it may have been like something that was legally or like yeah, the government. Oh my, like, you don't cancel because you do you do life, I do auto or auto. I, I, mean, is, I do auto and home. Oh my yeah. bad, yeah, you do everything. Yeah. But on my end, um, at least because I was a claims on the claims side, people's policies would be canceled. But technically, no, they hadn't made a payment in months. But it was a law around the time of COVID yeah. that you could not cancel them even if they didn't pay. So they still had coverage. Now at the end of COVID, which is ironically why uh, there is, at least on the insurance side, I'm not the company I used to work for. This is why they're kind of going on a downturn right yeah. now because they weren't properly assessing the fact that, yeah, because I remember, because I'm going to be real, we get profit sharing. Yeah. So we had a record breaking profit sharing the next year because obviously policies and forces, how you, how you calculate yep. that. Yep. But they calculated the people on policies without actually thinking, hey, half these people should have already been canceled or we're about to cancel them as soon as we're allowed to. Yep. So what then happened is once you were allowed to cancel everybody, obviously I ain't paid you in six months. There's no way I'm going to be able to pay this back. So what you did, you canceled it. And now the company, uh, they, I mean, they are badly in the, I think they have yeah, to. They downside, yeah, they, they downside. Yeah, they downside. The older people that was making a fair amount of money. Understand the market and where you're standing. Like you said, when the company kind of went down and it became a point of, hey, we need to cut costs and we need to cut costs immediately. Like you said, guess who the first people who about to be looked at? Oh, who making the most money? Who making the most. And that's what's going to happen. I always keep, that's why. If you don't work for yourself, which if you want to open your own business to kind of avoid that, because I mean, you could fire yourself, but why, you know, why would you? But to avoid that, obviously get with a small business consultant to figure out what you need to do to be in line. Kind of restructure. I mean, one of the things I see is just the most like small business owners and entrepreneurs, they truly don't understand expense to revenue ratios. Mm. Like they really don't understand the expenses they incur, you know, monthly, weekly, daily, let alone an annual perspective. They just know I got some money coming in, my bills paid, I got money going out, and then I can, you know, pay myself the rest. And that's just a, and again, that's from people that two employees to 60 employees. Like I didn't seen it. And that's one of the deals where when you do go to downsize, the first thing they do is, well, I just ain't gonna pay myself and I'll make sure everything covered. Versus, I mean, just assessing the expenses. I mean, instead of not paying yourself, why not stop buying 10 gallons of water that nobody drink? You know, like that's, you know, it'd be small expenses that as an owner, so much stuff going on that you just don't take the time to analyze. Yeah, I mean, I'm be honest. What you're speaking to is exactly a lot of the errors I made. So that's why this is perfect to have you here on the keys because you're giving me keys too. Because like you said, a lot of people when they first get started. Now, I wasn't operating, like I said, I was lucky enough to obviously have YouTube revenue coming in, which obviously I haven't been dropping videos. So that did slow down, obviously. Yeah. What, what are they paying? Who's watching these old videos over yeah. and over again? Uh, but obviously the studio, you know, was doing very well as well. But I wasn't, I, to this day, I actually, I still don't take... Uh, I don't I don't take any money from the studio at all. That's I mean, that's why I buy all this new equipment, but I okay. actually don't pay myself. What what would you say to an owner who, like you said, 
I, I don't know if that goes to assessing the risk, but I'm one of those like, you know, I don't even want to spend this money because you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. I might be working right now, but two days to a week from now, I might have no bookings and I need to make sure there's still money there for the bills. What advice do you give to owners? Because I know I'm probably not the only one. It's usually a spectrum. I mean, you got somebody who don't want to spend nothing for themselves or somebody who as soon as you no. get the profit in, it oh. is gone. Uh, how do you deal with those type of clients on either side of the spectrum? Uh, I mean, I've dealt with both, but it's more so just it's case by case because you got to access not only the business, but you have to have a transparent conversation with the owner and their lifestyle. That's probably the more difficult thing. The most difficult part about it is having a conversation with said owner and their lifestyle and then also getting them to understand their lifestyle. Because some folks get into living in their habits and, and, and keeping it or whatever it is. They done set out or their ways. And it's like, hey, your business may or may not sustain. You living like this, let alone survive its employees and its operational costs. So you got to assess it, you know, case by case. Now, one thing I would just peer advice is truly understand their expenses. Mm. A lot of like a lot of the issues can be avoided if you understand your expenses. That was uh, again. I'm gonna be honest because you speaking to me. I mean, obviously, I under I recently actually tracked all my expenses because I knew a lot of money was coming in and I knew a lot of money was coming out and I knew at the end of the day I was still in the green yep. because I haven't reached into any personal accounts yep. to do it. So I was like, whatever's going on is it's fine because cool. I like I know my rent's X amount. Every month, I, I'm, I'm over X amount. I know my yep. power, all this is stuff. Like, and I know I'm buying equipment. This equipment ain't cheap. Obviously, I'm yep. still able to go get it. So in my head, I'm going to be honest, which I know it's like a lot of people. I never sat down and really determined how much I was making, but I was like, I got to be doing all right. I got to be doing all right. Yeah. I ain't missing no money. It ain't costing yeah. me too much. None of this functioning. But again, you probably realize there's something that you probably, okay, I don't need to spend no money on this. Yeah. And that, that is what, uh, when I started realizing, or... Uh, just for me to give advice as somebody who's doing it, you just start realizing the value of time. Bad habits that small business owners create is they look at themselves as a small business. And That's they're fair. like, I want to give a deal or I want to look out or I want to, you know, make sure that folks is taken care of. I mean, if you go book an venue space, they charge you by the hour. And if they say, hey, I got to come set up. At, I, I booked from 6 to 10. I didn't set up at 5. Okay, cool. Pay for 5. That's one thing I recently, I recently started mm -hmm. doing. I'm like, okay, is this the time? And I ask, cool, because I, one thing I, I hate to do as a business is operate in the gray area. Because if you know if you in the gray area, and who who has to handle that? It's the business. Yep. You want to be the business, you got to, if it's gray area, yep. and you didn't make it clear, because, you know, we come from insurance, we big on contracts. If it's not written down, baby, I don't owe you yeah, that. Nah. Ain't nothing, ain't, I don't owe you that. I'm not going to do it, and conversation's over. So that's why I had to start saying, like, yeah, I mean, it's love. And that's just me as a person. That's something I was falling victim to because, you know, this didn't just start. We didn't open the doors as a business. So everybody I was working with already is like, yeah, come on, y'all. Everybody come on through here. It's all good. We, 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 we all on. And like, yeah, we still all, all on. But, you know, doors got to stay open. That's something yeah. I had to start realizing, too. Like, yeah, we, we make it. And again, that go back to me. You're not really assessing anything. You're not really like managing correctly and be 100% honest, but it's not really affecting you either because at the end of the day, you're still in the green. And it's crazy you said that because over time, like, yeah, you, you stay in the green, but less and less in the green, the more you continue to do that until you eventually end up in the red. And I think, like you said, a lot of issues with small businesses is the fact that, oh, I'm not thinking as a business. I'm thinking, that, hey, man, this is my dog. This is my yeah, dog. Yeah, you're every, hustling. Yeah. You have to, because at the end of the day, like, when folks be in a hustle mindset, everything over what I spent is profit. Exactly. That's the worst, that's the worst, like, way you can have versus, like, looking at it as, like, an ROI or looking at I made 20% on my, so like, versus, all right, if I spent 100 and I made 110, like, dang, I didn't make a lot, but I still made $10, so it's all cool. Versus, like, you just made damn 10 percent like what what am i like you can't sustain a business like that like that's all you're gonna make off of it you might as well get, get your double job nothing wrong with it yeah nothing wrong with it or yeah. you know get get you a, a, a part-time job to kind of you know something to yeah. keep it moving so we already talked about people not assessing their risk properly um not really treating their business as a business what is another major factor you see in the fact that a lot of businesses do fail um it's leadership uh, leadership is probably the number one reason I see small businesses fail. 
Um, and it's leadership from a standpoint of leaders or business owners being irresponsible. Um, ones having bad habits that they aren't willing to change. Um, not being visionaries or having a vision to see where they want the business to go. Um, not surrounding themselves with the people that can help their business grow. And then even like down to having poor leadership of you got people around you not listening. Um, but leadership is the number one reason why I just see business for Because a lot of the other stuff you can mask. You know, once unless you get over 10 employees, 5, 10 employees, and you're making real money, you know, uh, even then you can still mask it. Like you can still cover up poor structure. You could cover up disorganization. You could cover up um, late payments or like poor scheduling. But when the leader is just not, you know, functional or doing things a certain way or leading the business in the right direction, you can't hide that. And it's inevitable that it's going to just it's going to go away. It's going to be just dissipate. It's going to be done. Um, that's, that's definitely the more reason. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Like you said, because a lot of a lot of businesses, like you said, a lot of things can be masked either by a bad leader with a good crew. And then that's when you notice when that one person who was kind of keeping it together, when they leave, leave that, she the fan. everything gets exposed. He's like, oh, so, oh, they was the one keeping it together. That's crazy. So what do you think are, are some traits of somebody like uh, somebody who probably would be successful in business? Great listener. Great listener. Great learner. Um has the not only has the hunger or the will to go learn but then they apply it mm. they're very applicable people they don't just watch something or hear something or ask a question they take it and they go apply it and it, they apply it sooner than later they're very proactive they're not reactive people um i mean my mentor is probably one of the most savviest just business owners entrepreneurs i've ever making he he's giving me tons of game and it's the reason one of the reasons why i sit where i sit and think i can the reason why i can do what i do and he's very proactive he's very forward thinking um great business people also understand the importance of buy-in um, and they also understand the importance of leverage leverage is something that is so key in any format of business this is the reason, like, I look at it as a small scale. We talked about funding earlier. It's the reason why these new business owners, entrepreneurs get finessed out of thousands of dollars to get their credit fixed or to get put on to somebody to write them a grant or somebody to go get them a loan for them. Because they don't have the leverage. Mm -hmm. They don't have the knowledge. So they go pay somebody for it. So the person that's fixing credit, the person that's securing funding for you, the person that's doing all this stuff and you taking money, they got leverage. They got knowledge. The same person, like, that same business owner is getting tricked out of that. They don't understand how to leverage the people that work around them or the people they come in contact with. They get used. So you don't have leverage. It's like you you can't go be a great business person because you always going to be in the mix. Versus when you look at the just prominent business owners and the great entrepreneurs, they use their leverage. Whether it's human capital, financial capital, real estate capital, it's some sort of leverage. It's like, hey, look, I got this. You got that. Let's figure out how we can That's you know what I'm saying life, make this work. I say life about leverage. And That's if you, it. If you if you're not the A side, you already at a disadvantage. If you don't bring nothing to the table, that is hundred percent fact. But I'd rather lose money than lose time. Because no matter what, when you lose time, you lost the money That's anyway. You lost yep. money regardless. But I take the time. I sit around like people are like, yo, how you grew your business so fast? How you knew? Like, you know, I started in podcasting, did my thing in podcasting. Ran up the ran up the levels of podcasting quickly because no matter what industry you're in, you got to know where you stand within the market or you already lost. When I first got started, I knew who was at the top. I seen what they averaged at the top. I seen how they were getting there at the top. I seen their engagement at the top. Yep. Guess what you need to do if you want to be competitive. You need to figure out how to manage how to match that and then how to get over it. It's Same cool. thing with photography. Figure out who was at the top. Figure out what they was using. Figure out what they was charging. Get in there somewhere. But people in. don't want to. People don't want to take the time. That's one thing I know with small businesses since we're talking about a lot of reason they fail. You don't know where you are actually at in the market. And you, let's say you're the top of the market. I just got started. But I didn't really know, do no research into figuring out where I should be charging. So come to find out, I'm charging just as much as you. Even though you've been doing this 10 years and I just started. Guess where they going now? To the person that's worth it. Because you, one thing, and I, and I know a lot of people don't like to do that because everybody is about making money. But... 
like me, my business model, I nickeled and dimed it like a, a long way until I was actually legitimately where I needed to be. Yeah. But a lot of people, you just want to come in and you want to make whatever he's making. But you can't do that because you'll never one get the clients because if I got to pay the same exact amount, I'm going to him. If you ain't got the same gear, I'm going to him. And you can't get the same gear because guess what? You ain't making no money, so you can't even afford to go over there with him, no matter what Leverage. market you're in. Even like with you, I know you do the shoes. Y'all go get exclusives. Can't nobody else get because they don't have the capital to go even buy that shoe, let alone the clientele to then flip it to somebody or the else. Network or where to go or, get it. Yeah, you don't even know who to call to go get it. And if you do get it, at that point, you just going through the basic places everybody else going to because you don't got no relationship. So yeah, you yeah, what you hit StockX, Goat, yeah. and pay day price. Cool. Guess what? You no longer have any room to make money. So what's the point of even buying the shoe because you didn't know the market? So now you already at the top of the market. Then, and when you go to sell it, I might who are you selling? It too that they can't go to the same place and get it yep. so that like understanding where you're at in the market is why a lot of businesses fail because by the time you realize i might overprice myself it's too late baby your door's about to close and then life about leverage like you said to bring that back together oh i know you're struggling now even with the shoes but i know you ain't had no sales in a second go ahead and take this because who else you gonna sell it to who else got the money to buy it who else want to buy it same thing like that's why businesses fail do your research before you even get into it. Because sometimes you might be, the market might just be oversaturated. It might be 100 people doing this. So no yeah. matter, even if you might be good at it, even if you might have had a chance, it might be the wrong market. Maybe go to a different market to do it, like in Atlanta. Maybe you don't want to go in Atlanta and do that because there's already 10,000 people doing that. Middle Georgia, Warner Robins, maybe it's two, three people doing that. And you could actually be more successful in a different area. So that's one thing I noticed a lot of people who are failing their businesses on is because... I don't know if it's ego. I don't know if it's not doing a proper market research because that goes to anything. Even my podcasters who want to like charge for interviews. Oh, I want X amount. That's cool. I can't tell you. I, I tell everybody my quote is I will never tell you what to charge. I can only tell you what I'm willing to pay. That's your price. I respect it. I'm just not in a position not where me. I feel like it's, it's worth me. it. It's, yep, it's not just not for me. me. You got to know like, hey, yeah, I want to charge two, 250, 300. You might want to. But where is your justifiable return so you on get that? somebody to pay it. Yeah. And I mean, technically, you know, the old saying, if you get one person to pay it, that's officially your price. Not necessarily. I don't agree with that because you might just found you a sucker. Yeah. Right? yeah you, you might just got, got you a sucker. Like, if that thing ain't going to be substantially coming back, yeah, you might as well chalk it up. So, I mean, you gave some crazy keys. One thing I want I want to I want to bring up to you, too, because I don't know if you run into this a lot. I would assume because I just be scrolling and I see it all the time. People who like to call their businesses LLCs that are not actually truly formed correctly to be an LLC. What would be your advice for people who are, are because a lot of people like LLCs, you do that to separate yourself from your business, but it's not even properly structured. So you're not even separated if, if something comes up for liability. Here, here's what I would say to that. If you ain't have no meeting or no meeting notes, if you ain't got no board, you're wrong. Like when you look at the actual structure of an LLC and like the things you're supposed to check off in order to keep that veil of protection, the meeting and the meeting notes, your board, like there are certain things besides just having the EIN number and paying like the file with the state, which again, if you ain't paid the every year to renew it, again, you're wrong. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, it's just, it's just things that be like just... It's little things that folks really just don't think about that, you know, unless you do the research you actually read, like, yeah, you may have an LLC for all of 60 days and you didn't hit a checkpoint or do something you're supposed to do now, like you're flirting with it, not even being recognized. Mm. And especially talking about a year after that 365th day, like if you don't go pay them fees and stuff like you're supposed to to re-register it and make sure the state recognizes it, you're, wrong. you're done. Don't even worry about it. And again, that's where you, you got to, and there's nothing wrong with it because you don't know what you don't know. Like, that's just the reality of it. I mean, I sit here today and say certain shit, but it's like, I remember when I didn't know it. I remember when I learned it. I'll be the first one to, to be honest on my stuff. Like, you look back and it seems, one thing, that's why I never judge people who don't know. Because everything seems so simple after you know it. Yeah. Like, every, of course, of course you, you know it now. Obviously, yeah. it looks like some A, B, and C looks so but there's, simple. Like, there's, there's tons of, you just don't know what you don't know. And that's why I tell people, like, the, the, as when you go create a business, like, when you go want to be a business owner, and even when you look at, like, the people that you, like, uh, respect as successful business men and women and entrepreneurs, they have a team. They have a team. 
They have a team of people around them. They have a team of advisors, consultants. They have a team of just people they trust, a team of other business owners, entrepreneurs that they just share knowledge. They pick each other's brain because, one, you can never know everything. Two, if you're ever a smart person in the room, you're in the wrong damn room. Absolutely. And so with those two things, you got to have a team. And when you go and want to start your business and you want to go create a business or a hustle, you got to go put people around you that have done the things that you want to do, that have been the places you want to be, that are going to places that you want to go, and, you know, and that have that same thought process. That way, one, you guys can help each other out along the way, but then you can run ideas about each other and see what each other's missing. And that's how you come across like, okay, well, dang, I got two employees. I need my DOL, my resident department of labor. Do I have my employee ID you know, number so I can go pay employee taxes? Are they W-2, they 1099? They W-2, my plan employee taxes on the 10, or the W-2 people. And I don't care what industry, you gotta go build a network of people. Man, I don't care what industry, if you got a W-2 job, you work for yourself, you 1099, your network is your net worth. Like, I, I live by that. I, you know, you talk about being able to get things done, money, money is the least important thing. Like there's things, there's rooms you're going to get into, there's deals that will be done that won't have a lick to do with a dollar. Like, and I know you, I'm pretty sure you can say that, like, that money is the least important. One people. thing I learned, not to cut you off yeah. about money, if, you, if, if your deals, like don't get me wrong, everybody want to make money, but if that's the only reason the business is taking place and it's not like, you want relationships and the money. Yep. Because if it's just the money, like people could say they're going to work just as hard, they're not. People work harder for the people they are invested in. So, yeah, yeah if I gave you X amount, first of all, it's going to cost you more nine times out of ten because there's no relationship there. There ain't no love. There ain't you ain't nobody. You get no price. You get a real price. Not even a love deal. price. Like, this is, I need all of me, taxes included, everything. I, like, I need all that. And then it's just the fact that, like, it was just to get paid. Like, whether, whether it fails or succeeds, I mean, if it succeeds, great, but I don't really care. And that's yeah. the difference when it, the business is solely held up on money. You know, my slogan, either we both showing love or we both doing business. business. Because I don't play by my business. If it's business, it's business, it gotta be A, B, and C. I can't, I can't ignore C because you my dog. Because if that's yeah. the case, let me just show you some love then and let's yeah. not even worry about it. But uh, I ain't mean to cut you off. Flow back yours, man. Uh, I mean, uh, I would tell you, you know, your networking, your relationships are everything. Um, if you're gonna step into the world of pure entrepreneurship, be ready to listen and learn. Like that's the one thing that people, they pick the form of business they wanna go and chase after the form of entrepreneurship they wanna go get into, and they pick it because they feel like they know it or that's what they're gonna be good at or they're gonna be successful, it's easy for them. And that may be very well true, but you don't know everything about it. You don't know all the caveats. You don't know literally how this business functions on a larger scale. And you got to be willing to adjust. You got to be willing to adapt. Times change, economics change, laws and legislation change. Um, I mean, the markets change. And you got to be willing to listen. And you got to be able to learn how to change with those times. You can't be stuck in your ways because you were successful the first year. You, ha you did okay the second year. You're having a successful third year. Just because it looks like quick success, I don't mean it's sustainable success. You got to be able to learn, you know, the, the way to continue to grow and scale the business. And you got to be willing to listen to the people that surround you. Because once you're in business for so long, you naturally are going to uh, connect with people that are also in that industry. You're going to start naturally connecting with people that are have, you know, ways that they can help you out. And there's no sense in having those connections, you ain't going to listen to them. Like, that's one of the things I see with people all the time. They uh, literally have somebody tell them something is going to go a certain way, and they be so stuck in their ways, oh, it'd be all right, it's going to work out, and then it literally go the way that somebody's saying, if you didn't listen, you'd save yourself a lot of headache, save yourself a lot of money. But you got to learn this hard life lesson because of your ego or because you just feel like you know best. And, you know, that hurts a lot of people in the, in the long run of things. Absolutely. Hinder, hinders growth. Yeah, Instagram is the best place. Uh, one SB the DJ, you can find me. Um, I ain't hard to find. Like what Dion said, I ain't hard to find. I'm always willing to help people any way possible. Um, if you got a new business, an old business, you got no business. Uh, even if you're uh, in corporate America, I help tons of corporate people make transitions and, and also get promotions and stuff like that because it's a cat and mouse game. You know, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm an open book because I like to pay it forward. I mean, somebody you know ordered me, sat down and gave me the game and paid me while they, they taught me. Like I was in a very fortunate situation of where I bought something to the table that they could use and they were willing to employ and pay me. 
and give me game on top of it because he wasn't scared that I would surpass him. A lot of the people that are in the mentee situation, a mentee mentorship situation, a lot of stuff is withheld or you got to pay a mentor to like give you certain deals because they are have a real fear of you surpassing them or doing more than they did. I was fortunate if I've never dealt with that and I never go about it. If I come and, you know, unless we doing business, like where you, it's a real consultant business, yeah, that's a question I get to you. Show you where to go, tell you what to type in, tell you who to talk to, link you with whoever because I don't have that insecurity. Go do what you do. And um, it's one of them deals where, you know, if I can ever help somebody, please, you know, reach out to me. But, I mean, I tell people, just surround yourself with good people. Just because somebody coming to you saying they want to help doesn't mean they truly want to help. They're usually trying to figure out a way how they can use it to their benefit. Absolutely. Don't nobody really do too much for just for free. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It ain't too much just, I'm going to help you and I'm, I'm going to just Let's be see, in the back I think seat. I had mentioned even like, because um, like I do a lot of giveaways, but like it's, I show my tax returns. It's never been on my taxes, but a lot of people are like, yeah, he, he gives away a lot of money. He does this and that. You know, you know, he was a write-off, right? Like even Come the people on. like they, maybe Come it's not on. maybe it's not money they're taking back from you, but Straight they're off. taking they're taking goodwill from you. They're taking publicity from you. Like I, I don't Come respect on. anybody who's whatever your reason is for helping people. By they put, all means, they put it in the bank to her six months a year when they need something. Hey, yeah, hey, hey. hey, I looked out, yeah, man. I yeah, need like, that. It's I need real. That. And if they older, they definitely like I'm like somebody older coming back to you. They they try to put their teeth in you. Like that's just real. Yep, trying to make sure they when it, when they go where it's supposed to go. Yeah, they're they here. Door. We, and I mean, there's been a lot of growth. Um, there's been a lot of growth since the last time we sat down. Uh, there's been a lot of business deals that I've been a part of. A lot of them closed. I closed one before I walked in. So like, I heard it. Yeah. yeah and I didn't know big. if you really want. That's why, you know, I'd be big on making sure we don't get too deep into people's yeah. business. But, you know, congratulations on Appreciate that, of course. That. And, Appreciate and, that. And, and when you're ready to speak about it, obviously, we can yeah, have you back and break it, it down. Y'all finna see it. I know. I know. Um, but no, it, I mean, it, it, it's huge. It, it's a it's a pleasure to always be here because, again, bro, you created a platform. Like, you created a platform. I tell you, just, I was happy to hear that talk to me like he's coming back because I gained parts of a network via this platform, which is huge. And when you, you don't have to spend the time to go make the connections, and you can literally make a phone call and like you in a place here. Cause I call your time, hey, bro. You know somebody does. That's why I do this. Until you be like Trey, bro. Stop calling. And ask me that. I'm a call because it's like it's a resource. Why wouldn't you use it? I don't have a pride. I don't have no ego. If I need to get something done, at the end of the day, did it get done? And is it done right? Like, okay, cool. So it's like, I was so excited this is coming back. Because I know people that sit here are going to be a true resource, like, for me and my future. Like, and, and help all my businesses grow. So, now nah, this is valid, bro. This is, I'm excited, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. I feel that tip. And, of course, with the insurance, uh, I mean, I'm not here just to sell people insurance. I sell enough insurance to my clients. And I ain't being funny. I hate to say this because it's very arrogant. People watching this video probably aren't my ideal client, but I will educate you on one, how to get great rates, because I know that's very extremely important, but also how to make sure your coverage is in place um, and protect your assets from a risk management standpoint and not break the bank. Um, now to my, you know, people out here that is more so risk aware and, you know, insurance aware, I definitely love to help you out uh, anyway. I've got, I write literally the entire country, but I specialize in the Southeast. Um, and then from a small business perspective, man, you know, shoot me a DM, I'll give you my number, we can talk or whatever it is and help you any way I can. Absolutely. Well, if you have nothing else to say, like always, it's an honor and a pleasure anytime I get even a little bit of your time, man, because I, I know it's one thing to see it when you know how busy somebody's doing, the things they got going on, but then to take time from that to come sit down, man, I definitely appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Uh, if you have nothing else to say, my name is Lawrence Ray, and we are done. Not the... This is door!